Hi everybody, my name is Jimmy Carroll. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Tech B2B Marketing. I'm here today at the A3 Business Forum in Orlando and I have the pleasure of being joined by Gerard Andrews uh, of NVIDIA. Now I think most of our, our listeners or viewers know who NVIDIA is, so I don't really need an introduction, but, but Gerard, if you could talk about, uh, about what you do there, that'd be, that'd be helpful. Great, appreciate that. So again, I am Gerard Andrews from NVIDIA. I handle product marketing for our robotics effort. We have a platform called Isaac, which is an end-to-end -end platform uh, for the development, training, testing, and deployment of AI-based robots. Uh, it's a lot of fun to work with all these companies that are attending the conference, like A3, that are trying to accelerate automation, and we're excited to bring our platform to help move that uh, mission forward. Yeah, that's great. So uh, when I think about the intersection of AI and robots, I saw a really good keynote earlier uh, from Anthony Jules at Robust AI. So when you when you think about not just at NVIDIA, of course, but when you think about the intersection of AI and robots, how does AI open up new opportunities in robotics? Well, we have a saying at NVIDIA that everything that moves will be autonomous. And AI is going to be the key enabling technology for autonomy. And what we mean by autonomy is where robots can um, have a better awareness of their surroundings and have uh, more intelligence in their decision makings as they are deployed to do numerous automation tasks. Mm. And so AI is, again, that key enabler for that autonomy, which we are all uh, chasing. Mm. It, would be, it would be a miss for me if I didn't talk about processing power in the context of NVIDIA. So Gerard, I saw you speak at the AI and Smart Automation Conference, the A3 event earlier this year in Columbus. And um, you talked about something with, uh, with uh, simulation, 42 years of simulation in one day. What kind of new applications does that open up? What's that really mean for somebody? I'm glad you brought that one up. Um, in that talk, I was referencing some work that we have done around reinforcement learning, which is a, um, you know, a technique under the AI umbrella. And we are using reinforcement learning and accelerated computing to accelerate the training process as far more than you can do on con conventional CPU type architectures. Mm -hmm. And this allows the, um, you know, in that one, one case, a significant reduction in the trials in the training time uh, to train that robotic hand to do that specific task. Mm. Now, reinforcement learning right now is very heavily being used in the research side of the robotics, but we are starting to see um, some industrial applications take advantage of reinforcement learning for robot locomotion uh, and for more complex tasks like we demonstrated there, which was uh, dexterous manipulation of a hand. Mm -hmm. And so it's really excited to aware, uh, to watch the transition of how these things will move from the research into the application. Yeah, Gerard, I'm glad you mentioned applications. I was wanting to ask you about, you know, with this capability to do that kind of simulation with this processing power, what are some applications in, in the industrial world where that can benefit the end user? Okay, I uh, really appreciate that question. Um, we're already seeing people leveraging reinforcement learning to train locomotion uh, policies. And what I mean by locomotion is how the, a robot like a, like a quadruped can get around and move in different environments on different surfaces. Um, but I think the future is using reinforcement learning to train uh, fine motor skill tasks mm -hmm. like um, the dexterous hand demonstration that we did. And what this is gonna open up is the amount of tasks that robots can do in the home, uh, in retail, in healthcare applications that are different than today. Because a lot of robots today are deployed doing fairly simple gripper applications. Mm -hmm. But once you can do these finer motor skills, it opens up whole new applications for robotics. And I believe reinforcement learning and the type of tools that we are putting out there will help um, advance these use cases for robotics. Yeah, so I mean, even in terms of some of the well-defined applications in the industrial space, like pick and place or bin picking, it sounds like this kind of simulation will also be able to, to benefit those um, enhance their existing capabilities. Is that, would you say that's the case too? Absolutely. We believe that you know, simulation has tremendous amounts of value for the robot developer and the robot user. The developer can test and train all of the software that's going in these more complicated, more intelligent robotic platforms. Mm -hmm. And you want to test these things out in simulation. 
Mm -hmm. um, especially when you're dealing with corner cases, like you, these robots are going to be working more closely and closely with their human partners. Mm -hmm. And so you want to test out those interactions, validate your safety systems and continuously, constantly test your software. So staying on, staying in the industrial space, um, what are you most excited about in automation? Not just in terms of, you know, the intersection of AI and robotics, but, but the overall space. Yeah, I think we've heard it in many of the uh, addresses that we've had so far that the macro trends for uh, supply chain disruption uh, and labor shortages are really accelerating, which was already happening, which the, was the embrace of automation mm -hmm. and how reshoring and bringing these jobs and, and manufacturing um, back to the home countries where the products will be used. So it's many benefits for that, I think, for society. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's gratifying for me personally is to be working in a space to enable that because automation is going to be critical to, you know, executing on this vision with so many of the companies here at A3 and outside of A3 mm -hmm. share for, um, you know, for our future. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Alan Bolio and his uh, his global economic outlook said, Automation will be will keep the economy afloat during hard times, and that's that's really telling where we're at in the automation space. So I think what you said really reflects that nicely. Gerard, what else? What else haven't I asked about? What are you excited about at Nvidia? And what are you excited about? You know, in the automation space and machine vision and robotics. Yeah, I mean, uh, from the Nvidia perspective, we're, like I mentioned earlier, we're building this in the end platform. Um, with the idea that AI is gonna play an important role in the future of robotics. And what excites me the most is once we put the tools in the hands of our partners, the, th the types of things that they do, the type of solutions that they are uh, working on for their particular markets. And so that's the most, uh, most fun part after you know, meeting with someone, giving them the tools, mm -hmm. doing some meetings, and they come back and show you how they are using these applications. Mm. And, yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly right. I mean, I think about when I think about Nvidia, I've followed I've followed that company for years and it's it's great to get the chance to talk to somebody that works for the company and talk about how how they work with their partners and how they're innovating to open up these new applications and uh it's it's very interesting. So, uh it's really been a pleasure to speak to you. I appreciate it. Um again, my name is Jimmy Carroll. This is the Manufacturing Matters podcast. Gerard, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.